Okay, so as we continue to look at the basics of Ethernet, we're going to take a look at a couple of, of lower level devices. All right, Ethernet hubs. Hubs are talked about early in Chapter 4, and they first appeared when 10 base T started to become the networking standard that was most popular. Uh, 10 base T used twisted pair cabling, and uh, networks were arranged in a physical star, which meant that you had a, uh, a device at the center of the star, and all the devices connect to it, right? So it used the most cabling, <clears throat> but it allowed for easy additions, and if a node went down, it didn't crash the whole network. But if the device went down, then you lost the entire network. All right? So in the early days, <coughs> uh, networks started off with, with a hub, and then sometimes the hubs grew, right? Or the networks grew and added more hubs to it. All right, so let's take a look at these. The first one, the one on the left here, is the Linksys. It says it's a five-port workgroup hub, but that's just the name or the model. Okay, there gen genuinely are five ports here, but it could be used in a domain setup. It doesn't have to be just a work group. That's why I'm pointing out that that's part of the name. All right, when we look at the back of the hub, you can see, or you can see that there are five ports and one that's labeled uplink. All right, with the neck gear, everything is together in one spot. We have the ports on the front, and on either side of the port, right, where the tab goes in, you see the LED indicators. So you may not be able to see them in the video right now, but when, the, uh, uh, when we're connected, you'll see the lights come on. There's also a button. I'll t turn it so you can see the profile of it. And the button is either in and fairly flush, or it's out. And depending on, on where the position of the button is, this port that it's tied to will be in either a normal mode or in uplink mode. So you have that functionality there. That's one difference between the two hubs. All right. So uh, you may remember the previous video where we talked about uh, patch cords, right? Ethernet patch cord, what it may be. And you may remember that it's a cord that, you know, media terminated with two plugs, uh, 568A on both ends or 568B on both ends. <clears throat> and you may recall crossover cables, right? Ethernet crossover cables, I should add, because they're made for functioning in the in Ethernet environment because there is such a thing as 56K crossovers and T1 crossovers and they're wired differently. So, so to just say crossover isn't completely descriptive. If we say Ethernet crossover, that is completely descriptive. All right, so, so I have two cables here. And what we're going to do is talk about and then look at how we, uh, or how they, extended things, extended the network in the older days. All right, so if you recall from the reading, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can do it with a straight through cable using certain connections and you can do it with a crossover connect cable using other connections. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm gonna start off with my crossover cable. I'll take my crossover cable and let's see, I'm gonna go into my into port number three on the Linksys and And then I'm going to go into port number three on the neck here, right? I'll come over and go right into three. What happens when I make the connection? As soon as I make the connection, you see activity between port number three on the Linksys and port number three on the neck here. Now the lights are not flashing because there's no uh, data activity. There's just a connection between the two, so we get the lights on. If, we, if there were uh, some data activity, we would see the lights flashing a little bit. All right, but we have connectivity. How did we achieve the connectivity? We connected to a regular port on one hub to a regular port on the other hub, 
and we did so with a crossover cable which mechanically moved this, you know, switched the signals between transmit and receive and it made the connection for us. Alright, so I'm going to remove that crossover cable and I'm going to show you what happens when we take our straight through cable and make the same connection. The straight through cable with either A or B on both ends connected to port 3 on the net gear and over here on port 3. And there we go, we're connected up. And what do we see for activity? Well, we don't see any activity. What do we see for lights on here? We see nothing. And why is that? Well, because the cable is a straight through cable. And I've connected it between two ports that won't talk to each other uh, because what's coming out the transmit port on one side would be going in or transmit rather, what's coming out the transmit port on one side is attempting to go into the transmit port on the other side, not the receive port. So the hubs know they don't have connectivity between the right pins, so there's nothing there. But if I take my connection out of port 3 on this little neck gear and I move it over here to port 4, Nothing's happened yet because my switch is in the out position. And in the out position, that's the normal position, so port 4 is acting normally. If I push the button in to put it into uplink mode, what happens to my indication? I now get a link light. And the link light is indicating that things are con connected correctly. Now I asked before, how many ports are we going to have when we connect our 5 port to our 4 port? And I know the initial reaction is, well, geez, Poland, I'm going to have 9 ports. Mm, do you still see that your, <laughs> that your calculation is off a little bit? I've got 3 available here. What do I have available over here? I've only got 4 available, right? Port 1, 2 and then 4 and 5. So with that arrangement, I've only got the, what, 7 ports. I've lost 2. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that's a very common way of connecting a couple of devices together. It's still pertinent today somewhat because even though hubs are legacy devices, uh, they still have a place in certain uh, locations where you can connect a hub to a port on a switch and provide connectivity for whatever four or five or ten nodes through the ones you know through the hub and into the one switch port and things can still perform fairly well for a lot of normal computer data activities uh, and it's always best in the IT world to get as much use as you can out of your devices and just don't be quick about uh, sending them off to the recycle guy. I mean, you know, unless you're working for a big company and they've, they've got very deep pockets and can get the latest and greatest of everything, but uh, that's usually not the case. Things have to last a while. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you with this video, how to daisy chain a couple of hubs together. You can do it either with a straight through cable through the, the proper ports or you can do it with a crossover cable through the proper ports. Uh, the thing to remember is if you plug things in and you don't get the lights, guess what? <laughs> you gotta try, try again. You plug them in till you get the lights and when the lights come on, things are good. But if you really know what you're doing, you should be able to plug things in one time and the lights come on when you know they're gonna come on. Alright, so that's what I wanted to cover today. I hope this was helpful to you.